Mental health. Two words that many people seem to be frightened to speak about. Mental health and travel is a whole different matter that I very rarely hear people speak about on YouTube. Today, Wednesday, October the 10th, is World Mental Health Day, so I thought it would be an ideal opportunity to sit down and talk about some of my experiences with mental health, quite personally, quite candidly, prior to travel, and also now, currently, while traveling. If you're new to this channel, I'm David. I've been traveling long-term for the last two years, and I've been working online for a significant amount of that time. And I wanted to just address why I'm doing this video. There's a few reasons, really. Three, I would say. So firstly, as I said at the beginning, people are frightened to speak about mental health for some reason. It's 2018. I think we should be able and comfortable to speak about our mental health just as we would about our physical health. Simple. Period. Okay? The second one is that I've spoken about recently in a lot of videos that this channel isn't just about travel. It's not just about going to a destination and showing you some of the things to do. It's also about me, believe it or not. And I really would like you to get to know me better um, in terms of my personality and uh, things about me that sometimes I may show in videos in terms of my emotion and, and things like that. So this video is slightly connected to a video I did recently in uh, Guanajuato when I was uh, going from Guadalajara to Guanajuato, I had an awful travel day and experienced a range of emotions. And I've said since that video that I'm going to address some of that in this video. Okay. Thirdly, and primarily, it's about helping people who are watching this video. Okay. So I've been traveling on and off for about 18 years. And I remember what it was like the first time I went on holiday with my mates or the first time I did a backpacking trip to Southeast Asia and the east coast of Australia when I was 19. And I remember what it was like when I left the UK two years ago to do this by myself. It's nerve wracking. It's scary. It's frightening. It requires a lot of bravery and courage. So how do you do that when you experience mental health issues in your life? It's a great question. So hopefully I'm going to address that in this video and hopefully this will help some of you out that are perhaps looking to do something similar with your life. Before I go on, I just want to clarify that I am not a medical health professional of any kind. I totally understand that with mental health issues, everyone is different, everyone's experience is different and everyone's symptoms are different. In this video, I'm purely going to explain my experience. Yeah, so let's get going. This video is going to be in two parts. So first I'm going to talk about my experience, then I'm going to go on to five things that I do to help myself with travel. If you want to go straight to that point, I'll put the time index down at the bottom of the screen so you don't have to hear the first part, okay? Five years ago in 2013, I was diagnosed with a mental health condition called Borderline Personality Disorder, or otherwise known as BPD for short, or Emotionally Unstable Personality Disorder. It sounds quite scary. And firstly, I just want to eliminate one of the misconceptions about this. So BPD is often misdiagnosed as either clinical depression or bipolar disorder. I can understand why this happens because BPD and bipolar and depression do share some similarities, but fundamentally they are a completely different kettle of fish. Okay. They're different disorders. Okay. Which I'll go into a bit now. So as I said, symptoms are different for everyone. So there's three words I want to mention to start off with. Those are isolation, rejection, and abandonment, which are three key words when it comes to BPD, which hopefully you'll understand a bit more about quite soon. And there's other symptoms as well. So the first one I'll say about is impulsive and reckless and self-destructive behavior. For example, things such as alcohol abuse, drug addiction, self-harm, eating disorders, suicidal thoughts, and reckless behavior like reckless driving, reckless shopping, sex, reckless sex, reckless unprotected sex. Now, all of those things, with the exception of alcohol abuse, I've experienced, okay? And I, I don't mind saying that because it's, it's something that we shouldn't be ashamed of or embarrassed to be talking about. Everyone's got a past, everyone's experienced something, yeah. And the other key point about BPD is mood swings. Now, with bipolar, it's generally about depression, extreme depression and extreme mania. And those periods of unstable moods can occur for a long period. And there might be times where you don't have any mood issues and you're, you're behaving perfectly normally. 
And largely with bipolar, I believe that those mood changes are uncontrollable. They just happen. But with BPD, very much those mood swings are triggered by certain events, at least in my experience. So something might happen that will make you extremely angry, extreme anger. Something might happen that will make you extremely depressed. Okay, and that's what BPD is about. It rapid, frequent mood changes, sometimes in the space of 24 hours, which is hell on earth, trust me. And one thing I would say about these mood swings is, again, a, a difference between bipolar and BPD is the fact that with BPD, it's less about the mania. Some people will disagree with that and say that, yes, you do experience mania with BPD. And I would say that I have done in the past to a certain degree. So an example of that might be, so in Colombia, I had a lot of stuff going on, okay? And I was quite depressed for a lot of the time. I didn't upload any videos. I did some, but not many. Other times in my YouTube life, I will upload four videos a week and they will be ridiculously creative. I will be ridiculously productive. I'll be doing 25 English lessons a week and four YouTube videos, barely sleeping. I won't need sleep, things like that. So there is an element of mania that I do experience. And the thing about that is that it's not just happiness. It's happiness on a different level. Again, extreme mood swings. And it, it, it gets to the point where you don't feel comfortable. It's not natural happiness. And when you get like that, that's when you can do those un, those behaviours, that reckless, impulsive behaviour that kind of gets your mood back to normal. At least that's what I used to do. Okay. So that's my experience with mental health prior to travelling. Does it still affect me now? Yes, of course it does. I've never had any medication. I've never had any therapy. It's something that I've very much learned to live with. I've become a lot better at judging when those mood issues are about to happen. And sometimes it's uncontrollable in terms of, I can't do anything to get out of that pit of despair when I'm depressed. I can't do anything to bring my mood back down to normal. And it's really difficult at times, um, especially when traveling by myself, solo, isolated, and yeah, by myself basically. And one other thing, when I said about rejection and abandonment, I don't deal with rejection and abandonment very well. I'm awful at relationships. I can become manipulative, obsessive, jealous, absolutely crazy, uh, but I don't mean to. I don't intend to be like that. I can't control it. Um, and then inevitably when it does end, the, the level of abandonment and rejection just sends me into a downward spiral. That's why I'm single. I'm still working on that point of my life, by the way. So on to five things that I do to help myself when long-term traveling in terms of my mental health. Some of these might sound a bit ridiculous, but actually for me, they really work. So firstly, hostels. Stay in hostels. No matter what anyone says, oh yeah, you can stay in an Airbnb, you can go traveling and stay in hotels. Forget about that. If you are someone that experiences mental health issues, particularly if you're socially anxious, you're quite introvert, things like that, it can be really difficult when you go traveling and thinking, oh God, I've got to stay in a hostel with all these people I don't know and you know, be drinking with them and having a laugh. But come out of your comfort zone, do it. It's quite possibly the best thing you could ever do when traveling. I'm the biggest advocate for hostels. I've stayed in hostels for absolutely years. And yeah, you will have amazing times with those people. Some of the best people I've met in my life are people that I've met in hostels. And equally, you can have horrendous times when traveling and having that support network of people around you. Yeah, you might not know them very well, but they are going through the same thing as you. Never think that, oh, this really confident extrovert Australian guy in the hostel doesn't have any problems because more often than not, he's experiencing the same things as you are. So yeah, stay in hostels. It's the best thing you can do. The second thing, again, is about accommodation. So if you are going to stay in an Airbnb, I, I plead with you to stay in an Airbnb with a local person. So a shared uh, apartment, a private room in a shared apartment with a local, because it can make you feel so much more comfortable having someone there who lives in that country that's a native. They can feel, make you feel so much more comfortable. They can be someone that you can speak to. You know, imagine you're just sitting in an Airbnb by yourself. You're isolated. You're, again, slightly abandoned and rejected. You, you will feel like that, especially if you have those kind of health issues. And again, it might be scary staying with some random that you've never met from Airbnb, but I've never had a bad experience 
Okay, maybe I have done in Colombia, but that was nothing to do with um, the person. It was more to do with Airbnb. But yeah, that's my second point. The third point is hugely important. This for me is probably the biggest one that has made such a difference to me when traveling. And that is to do with language and clothing, which might sound ridiculous, as I said, but learning a language or at least the basics of a language and dressing like the locals makes you feel so much more welcomed, makes you feel so much more comfortable in a different country that you've never been to before. Yeah. So make an effort to learn hello, goodbye, thank you, how do I get this, can I have this? Become more comfortable having those conversations, even if you just go to the shop and get a drink. You know, you can have a laugh and a joke with the shopkeeper. I've had times where I feel unbelievably alone when I wake up and depressed and just being able to go out and feeling confident to have those conversations and not being stared at because you dress completely different from the locals, making you feel like a local makes such a difference. So I plead with you learn the language. The fourth point is don't be afraid of keeping in contact with friends from back home, keeping in contact with your family. I, I know that most of you will do that anyway, but sometimes you can feel like you drift apart from people back home, especially when you travel for longer and longer, you, you know, naturally people grow apart, but many people are homesick. I don't really get homesick, but I understand that some of you probably will. And having that, again, support network, like I said before, making you have that feeling of I'm not alone can, can make such a difference. So don't be afraid of keeping in contact with people from back home. The fifth and final point is a very important one and it's relating to two words, bravery and courage. Travel in general can make you the bravest and the most courageous person in the world. A type of person that you never thought would exist, a type of person that you never thought was possible. So push yourself, come out of your comfort zone, do things that you never thought you would do before because it will make you realize that you're capable of so much more in life. And coupled with that, it can really help your mental health issues in terms of your nervousness, your anxiety, your shyness, and your worry and concern and your depression and your mood issues, the list goes on. So be brave, be courageous, forget about what everyone else says to you that you can't do things that you'll never cope screw them, you can do it. That's my motivational thing to end this video. So I hope you have found this video useful. If you are a traveler, a long-term traveler, or maybe you're just starting out on your traveling journey in life, I would love to hear your feedback below and your experience. It would be great to hear about your experience of mental health as well. Um, do you think it's a great thing to talk about in terms of being open and honest about it? Because I do. Thanks for watching. There are a lot more videos coming from Mexico coming up. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and as I said, leave a comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.